Here are four signs that often mean God is saying, give it to me. Number one, if you are fearful because you are focusing on your own inabilities rather than on God's omnipotent ability, this is a sign God is saying, give it to me. God does not call us to tasks that we can accomplish in our own strength. Rather, God calls us to accomplish things that we can only do in his strength. Notice what God said to Gideon in Judges 6, verses 14 through 16. It states, And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Living the Christian life in your own power is not difficult. It is impossible. God does not save us and cause the Holy Spirit to indwell us so we can then live our lives in our own strength. God will always call you to accomplish things that you can never do unless he is right by your side. You will always be fearful if you focus on your own abilities because you will know you are not capable of doing what you feel called to do. And in truth, you are not capable. None of us are. But with God, all things are possible. As Jesus told us, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. Number two. If you have humbly planted, but now you must faithfully wait for growth, God is saying, give it to me. Throughout the Bible, there is a pattern of planting, waiting, and then harvesting. So many times, however, we want to skip this waiting season. We want to plant, but then we want to immediately harvest. But God requires faith after we plant. For if we are faithless and don't give our seeds time to grow by God's grace, we will not reap a harvest. 1 Peter 5 verses 5 through 7 states, Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another, for God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. There is always a proper time for God to bring His blessings. Also, notice the context that these two verses take place in. In 1 Peter 5 verse 1, Peter said that he was a witness to the sufferings of Christ and a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Peter knew he was in the waiting season for the coming glory. In 1 Peter 5.10, he also said, And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore confirm, strengthen, and establish you. You must suffer a little while, sometimes, but then God restores. God alone gives the growth. Therefore, whatever we plant, we must give fully to Him. As Paul said in 1 Corinthians 3, 5-7, What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Number three, if you are in a situation where you need a supernatural assurance that goes beyond human reason, this is a sign God is saying, give it to me. Sometimes all we know is that we have a huge problem. Sometimes our hearts can be so broken we can't see one inch into the future without feeling total despair. Sometimes the circumstances in our lives are so bad, so confusing, and so unsurmountable that the only logical thing to do is to despair and sink into depression. But this is why God has called his people to have a peace that goes beyond understanding, a love that goes beyond knowledge, and faith that is not based in what is seen, but rather in what is unseen. Philippians 4, 6-7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Prayer may not always change your circumstances, but prayer will always change you. When you give it to God, 
your peace won't even make sense to the world around you. Ephesians 3, 17-19 states, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You may not know how your life on earth is going to turn out. You may not have the knowledge to know how God will bring you through this issue you are facing. But when you know God's love, which surpasses human knowledge, you know enough. And number four, if you don't even know what to pray anymore, this is a sign God is saying, give it to me. Romans 8.26 proclaims, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. We won't always know what we should do, what we should not do, or what will happen next. There may even come times where you have prayed so much you don't even know what to pray anymore. But this is why God calls us to live by faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You may not even know what to pray, but if you know the Holy Spirit is there to intercede for you, you know enough. Trust Him always, for even when you are at a loss for words, God is saying, give it to me.